All right. Um, so I want you to all picture that you're standing on a wooden board that looks something like this, centered at a fulcrum, which is that triangle right there. Um, OK, so this board extends infinitely on either side of you, and you are completely surrounded by people also standing on this wooden board. Now suddenly, everyone starts to move around and shift to a new position along the board. Now, as the people start to move, the board starts to tilt to something like this. This means that certain people are raised higher than others. OK, now this wooden board isn't just a wooden board. This wooden board represents a playing field, the playing field for students who wish to enter the STEM field. You see, for a lot of us, like myself, who come from a background of socioeconomic privilege, it can be easy to forget that in the pursuit of a STEM career, our ideally level playing field isn't level at all. Instead, it's tilted putting those at a socioeconomic disadvantage at the bottom of the board. So today I want to talk to you about how socioeconomic status and the STEM field go hand in hand and some of the steps that we can take to, to level this playing field. All right, so I want to start by talking about how I got interested in this particular topic. So I kind of already mentioned that I haven't faced too much socioeconomic adversity myself in my life. Um, and as a matter of fact, a lot of the things that I'm going to be discussing today are things that hadn't really occurred to me until pretty recently. So as part of my freshman orientation week, I participated in an activity called Be a Teacher for a Week through Junior Achievement. Now, as a part of this activity, I was grouped together with a couple of other students, and we were assigned a seventh grade class at Mary Bethune, um, which for those of you who don't know, is a local school right here in Cleveland um, that caters mainly to lower income students. Uh, so we were asked to teach a simple economics lesson to these students, and our particular lesson was on choosing a career. So we started out by putting this chart, um, you can kind of see it, it has a lot of different jobs on it, um, up on a whiteboard, and we gave each student three sticky notes. Okay, and there were about 25 students in total in the class, so as you can imagine, after they went and put their sticky notes up here, there were 75 sticky notes covering this chart. Now we'd ask them to mark the three top jobs that they could see themselves having in the future. All right, but at the end of this entire activity, see that section right there saying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? It only had three sticky notes in that segment, which was really, really surprising to me. So at first, I interpreted this as these students showing a complete lack of interest in the STEM field. But then me and my fellow students went around and we started talking to these kids. And we find, found out that while a lot of them thought that it would be cool or interesting to be, say, an engineer or a researcher or a mathematician, they'd instead chose fields like electrician or mechanic, things that they viewed as being possible or within their grasp. And you see, this mentality of there being limitations or restrictions on what financially disadvantaged students can achieve is not an isolated incident, but rather a nationwide trend. In a 2014 study conducted by ACT, statisticians found that all students, regardless of their socioeconomic status, demonstrate the same interest in science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM field. However, despite the same level of interest, a 2012 study conducted by the National Student Clearinghouse found that only 6 to 7% of students coming from high minority and low income areas go on to pursue a STEM degree. Now this is as compared to 16 to 17% of students coming from low minority, high income areas. So what is the root of this disparity between, in between interest and achievement? Well, to answer that question, we have to take a look at the culture of STEM that has been created in our country, a culture of hidden or implicit socioeconomic exclusivity. You see, starting off at a young age, that wooden board that we were talking about earlier is level. All students have a pretty much equal shot. But as kids start to get older and opportunities begin to present themselves to only the lucky few, the achievement gap begins to grow. Our wooden board begins to tilt. You see, starting as early as middle and high school, certain students, like from the high school that I came from, have the opportunity to be a part of a robotics team or a science Olympiad team or a math team. But for students from lower income areas, these opportunities simply aren't available. And even if they were, that doesn't necessarily mean that they would be able to take advantage of them. You see, as 2016 data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics reveals, a lot of these students coming from lower income areas spend the majority of their outside of school time working part-time or full-time, 
a lot of times as a necessity to help support their families. The wooden board tilts. Now, starting off in high school, prestigious universities like Harvard and MIT offer summer courses and camps for those who can afford to pay the premium. Now, for affluent students, this is a great opportunity to gain more experience in the STEM field and develop valuable skills. But for a lot of students, this just isn't a possibility. The wooden board tilts. Entering high school, there is a huge gap known as the digital divide in schools, where some students have access to technology like computer labs and personal computers for every student and charging stations. But where students don't have those opportunities, they enter college at a distinct disadvantage because they didn't have access to those advanced level engineering and technology courses as they were going through high school. The wooden board tilts. As if all of this isn't enough, Familial expectations and pressures adds another dimension to this issue. You see, for a lot of students coming from lower income areas, they may be the first in their families to attend college, so they may not have role models to look up to or someone to push them forward. Also, this means that for these students, they're not, um, yeah, they don't have these role models who will be able to push them forward, um, as opposed to students coming from wealthier areas who do have these opportunities. A friend of mine, a senior here at Case, explains a situation where he didn't have any role models, and the expectations of his success in the future were pretty low. This makes it really hard to go on to college and pursue a career in the STEM field. The wooden board tilts further. You see, by the time students get to college, they face what seems to be a completely uphill battle, which can be discouraging and can cause them to not pursue a STEM career. As shown, in, and even if they do choose to forge on and pursue a STEM career, the struggles don't end there. 2012 data revealed that students coming from low-income households are 50% more likely to drop out of STEM majors as compared to their wealthier counterparts. Now, social psychologists attribute this difference to these students not having a support structure at home or any kind of guidance that will push them forward. Now, at this point, you may be seeing this as a seemingly insurmountable struggle. How can we possibly revolutionize an entire field? Well, I recommend that we take a series of simple and calculated steps to try and help the situation. So what are these steps? Well, first, well, first, we can start by doing things like introducing more programs like Junior Achievement, where students can gain exposure to professionals in the STEM field. We can start by partnering up with STEM professionals and STEM, in, STEM businesses in order to increase STEM-specific funding in these schools. We can provide additional guidance for students who are the first in their family to attend college to keep them on track and make sure that they have someone to support them. Through these simple steps, we can slowly work to level our playing field and establish socioeconomic justice in STEM. Thank you.